This Shabbos is called Shabbat Parah. The Shabbos of the cow. <laughs> what is a cow? So this is a portion of the Torah, which is a portion in the book of Numbers. Chukat is called. And is telling us something very strange. You take a cow, it should be red, completely red, and to be slaughtered, to burn, to be burned. Ashes are used to purify people. The water, very, very mystical process, law. It's the Torah, so it's the Chukat, it's the Chok, we cannot understand the reason, but in future we know the Gemara says in the Messiah or the Karotic Pounds, we will understand what is behind this law, Chok. Chok, yeah, we have in Hebrew Mishpat and Chok. Chok normally is something which we don't understand the reason. So let us really try to understand what is behind this para cow. In English, by the way, it is a red heifer. Yeah, heifer. Almost the same letter. Par. Because par, perish, a letter of power, or strength. And we spoke about it. If you listen, you can still listen to my lecture on Purim. In this lecture, I explain what are the letter perish, par, power, representing power, like strength, and how this power changed to be poor with the Vav, with the letter Vav. In Parah, in the word Parah, we have the pay Reish together, which is not so good. Yeah? And the letter Hey, numerical 5, represents also strength. If you remember, we mentioned that the idea of the power, Parah Gvurot, or the non idiom power gurot. There are five different kind of dimension of strengths. The strongest are Mem Nun, with Haman Ed, Haman Ed it Mem Nun. Men, very strong letters which represent strengths. Men in English man is a Geber in Hebrew. Geber is a Gibor, yeah, strengths. But what is it very interesting? that in both words, Purim, the source is Pur, Peresh and Vav in the middle, while in Parah, you have the Peresh also like in Purim, but together, with the letter Hey Parah, so they represent something similar, but Pur, very, very positive, this was Purim was. So what does the Parah represent? So I will tell you an idea, which I had when I was in Shiva with Rab. Rab Lapin, Rab Leo Lapin, Pachlidim, was there for five years. And he said, what really the red heifer, the red cow represent? All the process, what is behind, slaughtering it, burning it. And not only this, as the Torah goes into details, they burn the skin of the cow, the flesh of the cow, the blood, the dung, what for? Why does one have to specify all this for? We know quite well how cow look like, <laughs> that she has a skin, skin and flesh and blood. Why does it have to tell you you have to burn these four parts? Say, burn the whole cow, what for? So say, Rabbele, Rapian, the Sal. Frightening idea, but true, unfortunately. So he said that the cow, according to the Midrash, represents the Jewish people when they are sinning, when they are red, going up to the red. Yeah. And they wrote a verse from the Bible, Kepara Sorera, Sar Israel, like a cow Sorera, which is out of the way. Sar Israel, so Israel went out of their way not behaving normally as they should behave. So this was the Medrash says, but not only this, Medrash Kerizonian says, and who is a slaughter? Who slaughter the cow? She's not from the Jewish people. 
נבוקד נסר אין איס פרנד. מין לייק נבוקד נסר, פרסטמפל דיסטרקשן, לא צפתר בלצג'ור, סו יא זאת אוף פרנס, יאד המן, יאד היטלר, יאד טודיי, המאני. סו, זה איזה מדרש. זו סר זה סלוטרס, זו סר דוינג טראבלס טו ג'וס, and burning it, yeah, burning it, and what is this four parts which go through this terrible process, burning, holocaust, there are four parts in the Jewish people, there is a part, a group of people which really are economically fine, strong, making money, can give tzedakah, can contribute, help building Jewish institutions, yeshivot, and so on, and all together to keep the <laughs> nation going, yeah? Physically, you need money for many things. So they supply the money. This is like the skin, like the skin defend the body, the flesh, the blood. So those people are people really are working, okay? Also learning a little bit, but mainly working to make money and this money to contribute, to donate, to help for the Jewish people to last, to learn, to what. These are the skin. Who are the flesh? The flesh, already better than the skin, represent people who are studying Torah, learning Torah, and giving their really life more to Torah, to learning, to studying. And this is the flesh, you know, the skin, people have to help it, because we know quite well the importance of the Torah for the existence of Jews, something which Liban and Lapid don't understand yet, you know, these people from the Knesset, want so much the, the boys of Yeshiva to go to the army, and not, not to spend learning Torah. But he forgot that he himself, he was not in the army, he was... A good day. He was a journalist. At that time, he wrote lots of articles, you know, it was a paper magazine and of the army. So there are people which are also important for other things. People were cooking in the kitchen, also did not go to <laughs> fight. There are other important jobs. So the same thing, no less important is studying the Torah, because without the help of God, <laughs> who knows what will be the result. And we could see clearly in the time of the Sixth the War, by the way, they asked the yeshiva boys to learn non-stop. And it was like this, 34 hours one after the other, because they realized at that time that only God can help, because, you know, at that time, half Tel Aviv was ready for cemetery, yeah? Because, you know, it was only miracles that saved them, so what? So what Levi Brown and uh, Pete think that this weapon, they will be able to fight these hundred thousands of uh, missiles of the Iranian and Hezbollah and so on? Okay, no, I hope that's... We'll understand better what the truth is. So let us carry on. And as we said, this is exactly what the skin is doing, helping, keeping the flesh, those who are lazy, who are studying. What is the blood? The blood, what is the duty of the blood? What's the task of the blood? To give uh, oxygen, yeah, all over the body, to see if the body will function, will work. Nefesh, Adam wa Nefesh. So those are the righteous people who are really teaching, you know, and helping in this method, right? teaching. And you need rabbis to help, to solve problems, people need them. So the blood are really those teachers, the rabbis, all those wise people who are giving, helping the nation spiritually. Then you have another, a fourth part. This is a dung. This is a dung? In Hebrew, dung is perish. Dunk represent part of Jews who always want to separate themselves from the Jewish people. Why? This exactly was in Germany, you know, quite well. That many Jews converted, or many Jews try to show that they are not Jewish, you know, try to really behave like Germans and so on, try to do everything to separate themselves, to cut them off from the Jewish people, that they will be recognized as Jews, right? This is a parish. This is a part of people who try to cut off themselves from Judaism, to escape, to go away, whatever you call it. And it's happened. Assimilation, so all these things. So, what happened? What happened with Hitler, with these people? When he found out that the grandmother was Jewish, to the furnace, 
did not tell anything. Yeah? When a Jew progresses, that he's a Jew, so comes Hitler and the others remind him, this is the idea of anti-Semitism. Why anti-Semitism goes so strong lately? Because Jews unfortunately forget what a Jew is. You know, what is a Jew? In Hebrew, Yehudi. What is Yehudi? Yehudi are the letter Yud, K, Vav, Dalet, Yud. These are basically the build up of the letter Yud, K. Yud is Yud, Vav, Dalet. And yeah, this is Yehudi. He is the name of God. He carries the name of God. And if he does not be able to come to the Torah, so what is Israel? Israel, Israel, speak about Israel. Israel is straight with God. Yashar with God. No? <laughs> so can you cut yourself from God, from the Torah? So comes the anti-Semitism. and remind you, you are Jewish. You go away from us. You don't. <laughs> this is in fact what happened in Egypt. When they came to Egypt, Pharaoh gave them respect to Jacob, everything. Then the Torah tells us they start intermingling with him, you know, already trying to go to theaters, Egyptian theater, to try, you know, to taste of the Egyptian culture. Then came a new king, yeah, Asher Layadat Yosef, and this one who oh, oh, made so many decrees against Jews, yeah. This is exactly the truth, and this was the red heifer represents. Exactly the Holocaust. This is exactly what Holocaust. All, all people, righteous one, no equal, rich people, burn, all of them burned. Why is a secret? We don't know. We know about it. The Messiah will come. You know, maybe you can to understand a little bit. It is like a man is very sick. Yeah? Cancer. So you need a very severe operation. But you don't understand. You see this man, the doctors cut him and so on. They don't understand that in fact the end will be Good, and many will be healthy. So, this is, can be an example of the Red Heifer, which was a very, very strong operation. Yeah. And, unfortunately, this what happened. So, the Red Heifer, Paradum, as you say, the Red Heifer, is a symbol of troubles of Jews, of disasters. The Bukadnesser and his friend, what they are doing to Jews, slaughtering them, burning them. Everything, because yeah, going astray from the Torah, Parasorera, going from the out of the way, in Sar Israel. But no, what will be afterwards? So the Torah says, then after you purify the people, you sprinkle this water, then the rest of the ashes should be kept in a pure place, Makom Tor. Says the Medrash, what is Makom Tor? Yerushalayim. Jews will come back to Israel, to Yerushalayim. Yeah, you know, Trump said, Yerushalayim is the capital of Israel. And it will be now with Abu Mazen. But this is what is written, this is what Torah says, right? Terrible disasters, holocaust, burning, slaughtering. But the end, the rest, Sherit, Haifer, coming back to Jerusalem, Makom Tahor, if you place, you have to remember. Shalim is a nice place, but it has to be pure also. Not the creation of Shabbos, not unfortunately all these things against morals. Yeah, if not, so who knows what it will be. But this is exactly the description of the red heifer. As Rabbi Lapin said, I heard from him. You can see it in his book, Le- Le- book Level Yaw. Then we have interesting expression with the red effort. They should take to you. What is Elecha, Yikhu, Elecha, Yikhu. So, the indication that Moshe knew about it and he knew how to think and what to concentrate and doing it, whatever, but it was Yikhu, Elecha. It was necessary that they give it to Moshe, to Moses. You have another place in the Torah only when you have the same expression, they will take, should take for you, shemen zayit zach, pure olive oil, lamaor, for the candle, the mishkan. So this also, some kind of secret behind there, we don't know. But the Medrash says what oil represents. Oil comes out after you heat, you know, you smack the... Olive, you know, you hit him properly. 
then you press him, then nice, beautiful, pure oil comes out. But it comes out as a result, you know, of eating, pressing it, and so on. And says the Medrash, this is Israel. Also, like fresh Zoli, which means, also, unfortunately, they get, <laughs> they get, smacks, very hard smacks, you know, pressures and all kind of things. Yeah, and in the end, the oil comes out. They are doing shiva, they repent, and really the neshama, shemen is the same like neshama. The purity comes out, because really they were sinning, they realized is the result of materialism, of all kind of evil forces. And now they did shiva, repented, and when they repent, the soul, the spirituality comes out, and this is a pure oil. So it means, Basically, it is so interesting that both the Ikhu Elecha to take to you the oil from the olives is also Ikhu Elecha the red cow. What is the similarity? Both cases represent really situation of, you know, getting smack, <laughs> smack more than smack hit that by nations and trouble and whatever it is, but the difference is that from the red cow ashes left, but from the oil, olive oil came as a result of eating, right? Pressing, but this, what is the idea? So the idea is amazing. You know what you can see? From where you can see? When it is read, when this portion of the Torah read, because written is also the, the time of the Shabbos, when things are read, also have to do with the time. So, we read the Red Ephor, we read today, because, but it is originally in numbers, in Chukat, later on. But there is a reason to purify us, to prepare us for Pesach. So, read, we read the Parah now, because Parah, the Red Ephor is a purification, and we need purification for Passover, for Pesach. But basically the place is later on in the book of Numbers, the fourth book, towards the end. We read it normally when we, before the three weeks, you know, three weeks which is really already the time which prepares to Tisha B'Av, or the time the, the temples were on the way to be destroyed. But very difficult time. And really it brings us to Tisha B'Av, right? So... Red Ephraim, Tisha B'Av. What is the connection? Because Tisha B'Av, you know, the first world war started on Tisha B'Av. Now the second world war was an Elul, a little bit better, almost a month later. But the final solution, this is what the thing Rabbi Le said, the, the decrease, you know, of the Nazis, the Germany, came out on, around Tisha B'Av at that time. And the solution, so on. So it means that Tisha B'Av, three weeks, really, all this area, this, all this time, is Holocaust. Yeah? Red heifer. Right? So we read it exactly, unfortunately, the right time. We have Tisha B'Av, we have the Holocaust, we have slaughtering, we have burning, <laughs> furnaces, exactly. What's the red heifer? And when we read the, about, the olive oil which you brought to Moses and they used it to kindle lights in the temple. Seven, on the, really, a week, almost a week, few days before Purim. Why? Because Purim is the olive oil. And Purim, Zeus listened to Esther and Mordechai. They repented, they realized they did something wrong. They thought in the beginning, what is wrong in... Of, enjoying a nice feast with the Hashverosh. If you like us, you come to give him respect. Ah, you are eating something which was cooked by non which is really not allowed. You know, you know quite well. This is why we are normally see somebody, yeah. So, it's only the rabbis, the banana is not so severe. You can do it, it's not so bad. But, when they realize the severity, that even because of such a sin, only the rabbis said, no, but the reform, they don't like what the rabbi said. But they realize what the rabbi said. They translate what the rabbi said, what Mordechai said. And this brought upon them uh, almost extermination, extinction, extermination, Shoah, Holocaust. 
They listened to Mordechai and Esther, they repented, they admitted, and acknowledged that you were wrong, you are right, and they accepted the oral Torah willingly. Before in the beginning, in Sinai, they accepted all the written Torah. The Midrash says, the oral Torah, they said, what rabbis will tell us what to do? No, no. But when they realized the power of rabbis, so they changed, yeah, they changed, and they were saved from extermination. So, at that time, they were like olives, you know, they got smacks, they were <laughs> decreased, but the oil came out, the Neshama, beautiful ideas, came out, it's in Gilat Esther, right? So, this is the difference, right? So, the portion of the week of Tetzaveh, which we read two weeks ago, before Purim, always we read before Purim, told us what really... Jews are, they are like olive, and the tshuva, like it's been Purim. And these are the brooks, the par, if you remember, you should listen to the previous lecture on Purim, because Pur is par, but the bab in the middle. And the bab according to the dar is a letter of truth, a letter of holiness, of sanctity, of harmony. Bab, very important. So when Jews became united, really they repented, and they were ready, Proper Jews, it should be according to the Torah. So the Vav came into the power, into the power of Amman and broke it. Make it pa- Vav Resh, so they, they burn it together. The Pei and Resh burn it together because the Pei and Resh are together. Very bad, yeah, power. Yeah? Many, many were given in English, pruning, pruning, pressing. <laughs> you know, the, you need also in Hebrew, Parok, Paros, when the Pei and Resh are together, a song, yeah. So, when the Bab came in, it became really poor, weak, and he's written that this is the idea in Kabbalah, which was sweetening the strength, you know, if your judgment very heavy, so by repenting, praying, and so on, we change it into positive, yeah. So this was a poor, so Purim, the poor represent this situation with Jews by repenting really broke those connection of the power, pay resh, and brought Purim. Miracles, happiness, and joy. But in Germany, when you have the Mem Nun, you have Mem Nun, Men, we said, according to Kabbalah, Men, there are five Gurot, five letters of strength, which is Man Sepach, come also to 220 in Gematria, which is 10 times Koach, 10 times 28, power, power. And Amman took the Memnun, and his wife took the others, and the servants. So it was very, very serious situation with the men. Men in Hebrew is Geber, a man. Memnun is really strong. This was in Germany, Germania, and München, and Eichmann, and Mengele, maybe the men. But this, this is a negative man, there's also positive men. This is Menachem, yeah, in a positive way. But this is exactly the idea. Pur represents really a situation, right? Out of troubles and dangers of Holocaust, but it brings Jews to repent, to bring out the Sineshama, the purity, Hashem out of them, to see that all what they did was wrong because of materialism, they look after enjoyments and so on. But when they realize what is the truth, the Torah, the Neshama, was different. They behaved differently and things were different and it was happening and joy. The Yudim Ay Taurah, the Simcha, the Son, the Ikar, the Torah, Torah, Yom Tov, the Son, Simcha, all kinds of expression of light, happiness and joy. Right? This was because they did Shuvah, because they repented. But in Germany, when the rabbis told them, if you carry on your reform, this was the Salam said, he said to them, you reform, starting doing a new code of law. So the Germans, the Nazis, Hitler, will start doing new law of, of code against you, yeah? The new laws, yeah? New code of laws, you know, a Jew is not allowed to marry a German, and you know what's brought to all this holocaust. Yeah, this is when Jews forget. They are Jews, they want to make a new law, they want to enjoy the culture of the Germans, yeah, very important to be like them, so 
Come Hitler and tell them, <laughs> out, out. You are not for you. This is exactly what I mean. In Egypt, the same thing, when Jews started simulating them. Also, immediately, Yaakam el Chadash al Mitzrayim. And this is exactly which is happening when Jews, when they forget that they are Jews, they are different. That Israel is Israel, serve with God. And Yehudi is somebody who cares upon the UK. Yeah, this is. Yeah, Israel, boo, very popular name, but they don't realize what the name is, you know. So, <coughs> what we see here for this Shabbos, we see it called Shabbat Parah, the Shabbos of Parah, because this is the main part of this Shabbos, which is read, extra Sefer Torah, even some say it's a mitzvah to hear it, yeah, up till what to see and to follow what is here, and as we said, clearly representing what happened to Jews when they go astray from the Torah and the danger of such a day. And definitely one should learn from it, yeah, in Germany. In fact, one has to point out that, you know, that although it looked like people said, oh, God, where God was, no, what the Torah tells you exactly. The Torah tells you exactly. All this is written in the Torah. If you take the portion of Kitabo, there are 98 curses, 98 curses in this portion. And if you go over it, you see a lot of them in Germany. But why? Because they went away from the Torah. I mean, they went astray, reform, assimilation, Zionism. They also was against the Torah. What is enlightenment? They called it Ascala. Yeah, Ascala. So we are more clever than the Torah. So this was brought into This is, yeah, all right. So, this was, as we said, is a symbol of paraduma. But Purim is exactly the opposite. Pur, yeah, that unity, truth, which is lacking a lot today, the truth. Look what is going to Israel, everyone, every day different truths. But this is Netanyahu, and there are so many interests, alternative motives behind it, yeah, terrible. But the truth came at the time. Purity came at that time, yeah? Unity came, this is Vab, yeah? And this is why they had Purim, such a wonderful festival. But Germany, it was all of us, Paraduma, Red Apple. So amazing to see how there is a portion which exactly suits the time. Before Purim, the olive oil, and before Holocaust, the Shabbat, the Red Heifer. So, as we said, very important Shabbos really is supposed to purify us, to prepare us for the new month, the new year, yeah, Chodesh Lachem, Adel Lachem, next month, week, Shabbos, we read a Chodesh Adel Lachem, a Chodesh Chidush, God gave us a power to renew ourselves, to do Tshuva, this is a Chodesh Adel Lachem. Renew year, this is the most important for everyone, for the individual, for the nation also. So, let us finish here, even though there is so much more to speak about it, but I think the idea yeah, of para and pur in Jewish history is very, very important. So, let us really have a nice Shabbos. Perhaps before I will tell you something also interesting to do with two letters. <laughs> you know, it is interesting phenomena that the redeemers of Jews are with Aleph, Mem. Start with Aleph, the letter Aleph, letter Mem. You had in Egypt, Aaron and Moses. You had in Purim, Esther and Mordechai. You will have, in future, Eliyahu and Mashiach. A really deep idea what these two represent. <coughs> in fact, an example in Moses, was a pillar of the written Torah on the oral Torah. So there is clear connection between these two. It is like the main parts in the body, in the brain, in the heart, emotional intellect. So we need these two. So this is Aleph Mem. So some say, this is what the Torah says, Im, if you want Eliyahu and Messiah, so what you have to do, Bechukotat Elechu, you should go follow my laws. And Rashi said, Bechukotat Elechu, is Moses in studying Torah, working hard, laboring in the learning Torah. And then, in Bechukotai Telechu, then you will have Eliyahu, Mashiach, and then 
יהיה וישתבתם לה בטח לארץ, 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 יהיה